Hey fellow real estate investors, are you looking to be able to analyze markets across the United States? Well, look no further because Zillow's research economic data does just that. On a frequent basis, Zillow publishes information like home values and rental rates across the US and they go as deep as zip code level. In this video, I'm going to show you how to query that data using the Quandl API in Python. And this is going to be a two part series where we actually do a case study in the second half to get price to rent ratios in zip code. So don't miss it. My name is Ariel Herrera with the Analytics Ariel channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. I have a huge passion in real estate and being able to simplify it, build tools and help those like you to systemize your processes. So if this is the kind of content that you enjoy, then please subscribe as well as like this content so I know to make more of it for you. All right, let's get started. On Zillow's research page, they offer a lot of information in terms of trends, analysis, but particularly we're going to be focusing on the data aspect, housing data. So what's really useful is that on a frequent basis, Zillow posts housing information, including home values, rental, inventory, sales cuts, and more. So this is super useful if we want to get a sense of how are home values looking within a particular market? Do we see it increasing relative to other markets? Is this something that can signify to us this might be a new market to venture into? And at the minimum, it just gives us clarity to understand how different markets are performing. So currently, in order to be able to get this data, you would come to Zillow.com research slash data. And then based on what you're looking for, so for example, home values, if you want to look at all homes, so this includes single family rentals, condo and co-op, you could select this data type. And then the second piece is a geography. So what's really cool about this is that Zillow goes as deep as the zip code level. And having been exposed to a lot of these aggregated data sets, for example, in the Northeast, one of the metro areas is Newark, Jersey City, I think New York, it's all considered one metro area. However, there's so many, many submarkets and neighborhoods within that. So it's really useful to be able to get down to that level with this data. So in this case, you would click zip code, for example, download it, and then you'd be able to open this up in a CSV file. So either open it up for free in Google Sheets, or if you have Excel, and you could just quickly open it up within there. From this data, we get a region ID. We get information on the state name, city, metro, county name, and then information going back to 2000, all the way up to the most recently published data, which is January 31st of 2022. And as this recording in February, we are only backdated um, by one full month. So that's completely normal. Even though this data is useful and I could start working with it either in a UI like Tableau or I can start working in it in Python, it's not really useful to do this on a frequent basis every single month when this is published. And this is where actually utilizing APIs comes into play because we could programmatically get this data, have it refresh, say, every month so that we're not manually going through the process of extracting this running VLOOKUPs or formulas, it's just all automated. So how do we actually do this? Well, Zillow doesn't actually provide this information in the API, to my knowledge. So an alternative is going to NASDAQ's data link. Within this, NASDAQ has a list of APIs, and one of them being by Quandl, which they have a lot of information as well on the stock market. But in this, browser for databases, you could see that once I type in Zillow, that there's a Zillow real estate data set. And if we click through it, you need to be able to first log in It's a free account. So do that quickly. And then you'll be able to see the list of tables. The first of the tables, we have Zillow data. So this is ultimately what we're trying to get at. And in this case, the indicator ID that we have is ZSFH 
which is for single family home for a particular region. And we have information going back for every single month here, as well as the home value. Then we have another table, which is the actual indicators. So even though the data set was looking at single family home, there's other indicators that we could look at, for example, five plus bedrooms. And this is the equivalent of when we go back to Zillow site, we select this data type here. It's basically the same thing, selecting it over here. Then we have regions. So this region that was selected was 99999 for the example. But for every zip code, state, city, pairing, there's a different region ID, which we're going to need to use in order to query the data. And don't worry, this will make a lot more sense as we dive into the actual notebook. But it's good for us to understand what the database is, where the documentation is, if you have further questions as to what the coverage and different codes actually mean. Awesome. So now we have an overview of what the data is where you can find information for documentation. And now let's actually jump into the code. Great. So what you want to do is clone this notebook yourself. The link is below in the show notes. In order to clone, you're going to copy the link, go to file, and then save a copy to your drive, assuming that you have a free Google account. Then once you do, you're going to see some notes up here. And what's important for you, if you haven't already, is to log in with that account for NASDAQ and request a NASDAQ data API key. Even though this data set is free, I highly recommend to be able to get this key so that you can maybe use it for other different tables in the future. And in this example, I'm going to be showing how to actually request the data with the API key. Then I have some other useful resources. This includes Google Collab Cheat Sheet, NASDAQ database, and some more. First thing to start off with is running the cells. If you're new to Google Collab, it's very similar to Jupyter Notebook. It's just an IDE to run your code. And you don't have to have Python locally installed, which is the best part. So here we could run this by either clicking the play button or by clicking runtime, run all. And what we're doing here is just installing the packages that we need. So we need to install Quandl so we could use their functions. And then later in the second half of us actually getting this price to rent ratio analysis, we're going to want to get coordinates. So you'll see why we need that package later. Next, we want to import different libraries we're going to be using. This includes the Quandl API, so that's very important, as well as some data manipulation libraries like NumPy and Pandas. And then later we'll be visualizing this information in Plotly have some functions here that are going to make some of our repeatable code a little bit easier to run. For right now, just run that. And then in the next two sections, this is very specific to Google Collab. So I have it set up that I have a file where all my API keys are, and it makes it a little bit easier to be able to get that data right away. So in this next line, what I do is I say, go find that file that has all my API keys. And then I want you to locate where there's Quandl and Mapbox, since we're going to be plotting something later. Then get those keys and assign them to these variables, which are strings. And I then reassign this Quandl API key to Quandl API config that API key, which is just how I honestly have seen it done in other documentation. So I have that set there. Great. So for the next part in the data sets that we saw, we were able to get Zillow indicators here. And if we expand that, we could see all the different indicators that we can get data for. So for example, median days to pending, median list price, single family home values, etc. Now, if we go back here, it's very easy. We do get table and then we specify Zillow and indicators. So within the Zillow space, we want to get the indicators table. Then when I run this, I'm able to quickly get how many indicators there are, as well as group by what category they're in. So in this case, we have 56 different indicators that we could get data for, which is pretty cool because I'm pretty sure within just the Zillow page, we don't see all of those. So we actually get more in the API, which is neat. Now, if we do a group by, which is a pandas function, we could see that the home values 
inventory and sales and rentals um, are the indicators available with inventory and sales being the most. And what was really neat, I skipped this part, but when we actually query from Quandle, it automatically gets our data into a pandas data frame, which is huge. Um, we don't have to actually transform or wrangle this data set. It's already easy in a row, column type tabular format. Now, if we look at that indicator table, whenever that category is home values, we could see all those home value indicators that we saw before in that dropdown. We have home values from one bed to five plus bed, all single family homes, all homes in general. So this is a good way for us to understand what are indicators we could use to grab data. Now, if we use the category rent, we could see here that there's two options. There's RSSA, RSNA, and their meanings are seasonally adjusted and one is not. So you could decide which one you'd like to use as well. There's more information on Zillow's site, I believe, on what some of these definitions are, and they believe they have documentation outside of this too. Great, so now we have our indicators that we're going to want to get because we want to get home values and we want to be able to get rental data because in the end we're looking to get price to rent ratio, which I'll describe a little bit more in the next video. Okay, so we know what data points we wanna get, but now we need to understand how do we actually select the regions that we want. Now, if we go to that get table, so we go back to what that table looks like down here, we could see that there's this region type so the way this data is split is by zip code, city, county, neighborhood, state, and metro. So the way that works is, in this example, Douglas County. So Douglas County is the overall county, but within that county, if we want to look at specific zip codes, then they're going to have different region IDs. If we want to look at Douglas County as a whole, that's going to be its own region ID. So based on how you want to cut the data, how granular you want to get, is what region's IDs you'll select. I want to get as granular as possible, so I'm going to select zip. And when we go down, down here, I'm basically selecting that I want to look at region type zip, but I did notice that it's hard for me to be able to query what exact city I want out of this. So for example, everything here is separated by a semicolon, but it'd be a lot easier if it's actually in its own columns so that I could say, for example, get all zip codes with XYZ city. So what I do here is I have different functions and these were the functions that were up top. So we have check state. So I check to see if the state is in the string, county, city, and metro. And you might be asking, well, why don't you just split the semicolon and then just have your five or six columns that you need? Well, sometimes this region field has six different attributes, five or four, which is why I have this piece here called region string length. So I can actually determine how many attributes are in that string. So you can see here in the second zip code, it's actually missing I believe the metro area. So that's why I had to use some logic in order to figure out is the metro present? If not, then put none and then the same thing for the rest. Hopefully I didn't lose you there, but overall we're just making the data a little bit easier in the structured form so we could query it later. Now for the third part. So this is actually getting the data, which is probably what you've been looking forward to the most. So in this example, Let's say I want to look at my home's original home state, New Jersey, and one of the cities I used to live in, South Amboy, I could query this a lot more easily now because I separated the different columns and I could say state equals New Jersey and city contains something around South and space A. So we get one row that returns and it's South Amboy in the county of Middlesex County, which is correct, zip code's correct and it gives us this region ID. So this region ID is how we get all data for South Amboy. Next, we want to get the median home price. 
So if we remember when we go up to the indicators, we have all these different ways to get home values. In this case, we're just going to go for all. We're going to keep it simple. We want to get the home value for, for all, which should be a median of those. So what we do here is we get quandle, get table, Zillow, and then forward slash data. Then we put our indicator, which is Z all, and then our region ID, which is 61233. And voila, once we do that, we're able to get all the information for South Amboy going back many months on what the home value is. And this, remember, this is the general population of all the homes um, in South Amboy, so this is not comprehensive of like one particular property. So you could have some on the high end, some on the low end, and Zillow uh, is able to get that data into a median so we can more easily analyze it. And we could see from March all the way to July of the year 2021 that this home value has increased. Now, when we're going to want to dive into our case study for the price to rent ratio, we need one more factor. We also need rent. We have home values, but not rent yet. So we do the same exact thing as where we have Quandle, get table. It's going to be Zillow forward slash data again. Our indicator now changes. This is the only thing that changes. It is now RSSA. And that stands for that indicator up here that we had, RSSA, which is rentals seasonally adjusted for all homes, including multifamily. Then we are going to select the same region and I asked to show back the first five. And here we have what the rental median is for each of these months. So that's how you're able to use Quandle in order to query that information that Zillow provides for free on a monthly basis. This is really useful if you wanna build it into a tool, you're doing some sort of research, or you just need to have a programmatic way to analyze things for a larger model that you're working on. Hope this has been useful and don't forget to check out part two where I go through the case study and we actually look at price to rent ratio and we create a really cool graph at the end so we could analyze our data fast. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks.